Chiropractic is an alternative form of medical treatment that is based on the premise that vertebral subluxations interfere with the nervous system and cause many different kinds of health problems. The World Health Organization defines vertebral subluxation as a lesion or dysfunction in a joint or motion segment in which alignment, movement integrity, and or physiological function are altered, although contact between joint surfaces remains intact. The HealthWorks website says chiropractors treat with special attention to structural, spinal, musculoskeletal, neurological, vascular, nutritional, emotional, and environmental relationships. All that simply from massaging and manipulating of your spine. So who thought up chiropractic treatment? Daniel D. Palmer began his medical career practicing magnetic healing, phrenology, and holistic medicine. Chiropractic is a holistic practice he theorized in 1895 after reportedly restoring a deaf janitor's hearing by manipulating a lump on his back. Not only is it holistic, but Palmer said in a letter written in 1911 that we must have a religious head, one who is the founder, as did Christ, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, Mrs. Eddy, Martin Luther, and others who have founded religions. I am the fountainhead. I am the founder of chiropractic in its science, in its art, in its philosophy, and in its religious phase. According to the founder, chiropractic operates on the basis that everything is biologically connected and has a spiritual element. It's been over a hundred years since Mr. Palmer came up with vertebral subluxations and how to treat them, but little has changed in the practice since then. In his book, Essential Principles of Chiropractic, published in 1984, V. Strang explains the hypothesis that when the vertebrae are out of alignment, the nerve roots and or spinal cord can become pinched or irritated. However, he also admits that while it may be the most commonly referenced hypothesis and easiest for a patient to understand, it may be the least likely to occur. In fact, just about the only evidence for chiropractic's effectiveness is chalked up to testimonials, with no useful studies done or observations made by neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, or radiologists, which could support the theory. It's true that back problems can produce problems in other parts of the body, and that the spine is connected to all of the nerves to the rest of our body, but the range of treatment chiropractic promises is just not realistic. It can be beneficial to those with back pains, and it may even temporarily appear to relieve tension in other areas, but there is no evidence that it is useful for serious illnesses. The problem with chiropractic is the same problem with the medical profession. It's a profession. These people don't want to lose their jobs, and some of them buy into the fantastically imaginative things they've been told, without doing unbiased, necessary research to see if what they believe is true. There's no shortage of clients willing to pay, though, so maybe they think the same as a chiropractor's patient once said to me. I don't care either way. It feels great. Like some of the medical tools of past centuries, chiropractors use motion x-rays, surface EMGs, and digital thermography, despite none of these showing any evidence for detecting vertebral subluxations. And just as you might find with other pseudosciences like feng shui or psychic readings, different chiropractors tell patients different things about where their subluxations are, how severe they are, etc. But what else would you expect when subluxations are such vague, unestablished concepts? If the science is there, they should be getting similar answers, but investigative reporters have found just the opposite. But once again, chiropractic is not entirely without merit. There are some chiropractors who cut out the dogma and view themselves more as therapists, which is much more honest, but still the equivalent of a trained professional masseuse. Let's make sure we don't take the dogma to the other end of the spectrum, though, as one chiropractor has stated that subluxations, genes, gravity, the ego, and life are all heuristic devices, useful fictions that are used to explain phenomena that are far larger than our understanding. That may be true of the ego in life, but genes and gravity are very different from subluxations because we have at least some consistent idea of what they are, and we can also observe their effects. So let's not pretend it's of no consequence, especially when chiropractic can indeed be dangerous and Medicare funnels our tax money to these people. Don't just take someone else's word for it, whether they're a chiropractor, a patient boasting of their recovery, or even a medical professional. Do the research, question the methods, and remember that spirituality, superstition, and science do not and should not mix.